all WashU Olin online courses include synchronous and asynchronous content. Watch this example of the kind of asynchronous coursework you do on your own and at your own pace. Think for a moment about the teams that you've worked on that, at least in your view, were the most effective. Now, think for a moment about the teams you've worked on that you think were the least effective. I'd guess that these two categories of teams are differentiated by more than just whether they accomplished their task objectives. You may have been on a team that you thought was great, but that fell short of achieving its goals. And you may have been on a team that did achieve its goals, but that you thought was actually not that effective. What this reflection reveals is that the effectiveness of a team is not only whether it produced a set of measurable work-relevant outcomes. Certainly, doing so is important, but this is not the only dimension of team effectiveness. In reflecting on the outputs of a team, you know, the results that are generated by interactive team processes, we need to consider results as more than just a set of deliverables that people produce as work products. We also have to think about the impact of these processes on the members of the team themselves. Researchers who study teams commonly view effectiveness as comprising three critical dimensions. And this multi-dimensional conceptualization of effectiveness is going to be the one that we adopt in our course. The first dimension of our conceptualization is team task performance. Task performance reflects the degree to which a team meets and exceeds the expectations of its key stakeholders. The most effective teams deliver high-quality work on budget and on schedule. For example, the task performance of a management consulting team might be the client satisfaction with the team's final report and recommendations. Or, a social media marketing team's task performance might, at least in part, be assessed as growth in traffic or online engagement or click-through rates to its company's products. The second dimension of team effectiveness is team learning. The most effective teams are those in which team members grow and develop through their work, both as individual contributors and as collaborative partners. Learning is an important dimension of team effectiveness, particularly in organizations that operate in highly complex or competitive markets that are characterized by frequent innovation. When team members continuously learn through their experiences working together, they're able to deliver more value with the same resources, thereby creating an advantage for their organization over competitors that may be more stagnant. Consider again a management consulting team. Through the course of its work, team members might learn new methods of data acquisition or analysis that can be easily applied to future projects. The third dimension of team effectiveness is team satisfaction. At the end of a team experience, what is the feeling that team members have toward their work and toward one another? A highly effective team is one in which people feel that their work was meaningful and that their experience working together was relatively positive. Now, importantly, this doesn't mean that the experience was easy, free of speed bumps, or even that everyone in the team likes one another. Instead, this means that the experience was sufficiently positive and meaningful that team members would be willing and interested in working with one another again in the future. Now, in a world in which highly skilled workers are in short supply, team satisfaction can be particularly important for organizations to consider. Think again about a management consulting team. If team members would be reticent to work with one another on a future project, or if they speak poorly about their collaborative experience, their consulting firm may face staffing challenges or even downstream attrition. And so together, these three dimensions, Team task performance, team learning, and team satisfaction constitute a well-rounded and comprehensive view of what differentiates the most effective teams from the least effective teams. In an ideal world, a team would be able to simultaneously maximize on all three dimensions of effectiveness in the course of its work. In the real world, though, teams almost always face resource constraints 
or have contextual requirements that inhibit maxing out on all three dimensions. For example, there may be some projects for which high task performance is so critical that a team has to de-emphasize learning because they have to avoid the chance of errors or mistakes that inevitably accompany learning. A management consulting team may be working, for example, for an incredibly important client on a project that is highly visible to the public. Mistakes on the project could significantly harm the reputation of the consulting firm. In this type of context, a team might consciously choose to overemphasize task performance and underemphasize team learning. Or there may be some projects in which team satisfaction has to be somewhat sacrificed in the pursuit of high team task performance. Some projects that are important revenue generators may not be particularly meaningful or all that fulfilling for team members, but they still need to be done. What's key is for team leaders and team members to carefully consider these kinds of trade-offs and to communicate openly with one another about the trade-offs that they're making. Open awareness and communication are necessary for the long-term sustainability of teamwork. Now, one of the most common pitfalls is for managers to pay disproportionate attention to task performance alone and neglect the other two dimensions of learning and satisfaction. And so to put this multidimensional framework into practice, you should be vigilant in carefully assessing all three dimensions that comprise team effectiveness at the conclusion of a team-based project. It's commonly said that what gets measured gets attention, and this is certainly true when it comes to teamwork. Measuring and discussing all three dimensions with team members should be part of the post-mortem or the debrief process that usually follows the conclusion of a team project. This ensures that the feedback loops that flow back to team design and team processes consider not just the instrumental side of the team's work, you know, its task performance, but that they also consider how a team's design and processes can best facilitate team members' learning and satisfaction. Want to learn more about online content? Check out the link in the video description.